Hi. Well, I'm Doug McInnes. As Alf said, I work for uh, YP. Um, and uh, this is a talk on Jacob, which is a, a project I built internally and we just recently out, uh, open sourced. Uh, I talked about this, actually, I gave a similar talk about this a year ago at LA Ruby. But um, since then, we've actually been able to open source it. Uh, there's a lot of, because the, the company changed hands and there's a lot of craziness. So, uh, so that's basically it. So uh, I work on yellowpages.com, uh, which I guess you guys all know. And uh, it is a very, very large Ruby on Rails app. It's, uh, it's not even the latest version of Rails. It, it has a lot of legacy code. It's been built up over maybe four years now. Uh, so it's- Four years in December. Four years in December, that's right. So we, we use a lot of our spec code to cover our Ruby code. You know, we try to keep 100% coverage. We're, our tests can, you know, can be good or bad, but but it's, it's something we strive to do. We, we, we don't always do test-driven de development, um, but, but we, we try our best to at least have most of the code covered. So I just recently looked, and the, the ratio of JavaScript to Ruby in our application is 0 0.8. What that means is that we have eight lines of JavaScript for every 10 lines of Ruby code. So there's more Ruby code, but there's a lot of JavaScript. You know, it, it's a web application, but there is a lot of there's a lot of pieces to it that require a lot more interaction than, than you could get after just a simple Rails application. And I think this is becoming more and more common for a lot of web applications. And even having one-page apps become very common. Uh, so, well, JavaScript is code two, so we should be writing tests for it. Um, so this is kind of where Jacob can, comes in. We started writing tests for our JavaScript a few oh, years ago, but we moved from a lot of different, uh, we started out with this thing called Blue Ridge, which was a Rails plugin, and that kind of went away, and people stopped working on it. And then we moved to uh, using JSpec, which is another framework that people stopped working on, and so it be started to rot, basically. So with this, we had, um, uh, we were kind of building out the back end to try to try to, to get it to work a little better. We re it, the the old framework we we're using used uh, spy, um, whatever the uh, I can't remember the name of it the Java ver a Java virtual machine a Java version of um, a, a JavaScript uh, runtime that was I forget what it's called Spider Monkey I think uh, but it was not um, it wasn't working very well. But we had certain needs for our JavaScript code. We needed to run headless, uh, basically without a browser. The reason behind this is that we have a large, um, a large uh, Hudson instance, which is a continuous integration server. That anytime you make a commit to our GitHub, uh, our Git repository, it checks it out, runs all the tests, and then if it passes or fails, it emails raises up red flags, and we're even working on getting a, um, a uh, traffic light mounted in the wall it, uh, that shows the, the, the state of the, the bill. So we've been working on that quite a bit. Um, the, so since it's running on a random server, we can't really run a browser very easily, so it needed to be to run headless. <clears throat> we also wanted it to run really fast. The, the old Java version of uh, the JSpec spec, um, thing ran really slow. It took quite a bit of time. So we, we pulled out the back end and replaced it with um, the Ruby Racer, which is a, a Ruby gem that embeds a V8 JavaScript uh, interpreter inside of Ruby, which V8 is the, the, the engine that runs in uh, and in, in, it runs Node, it runs in Chrome, it's really fast. It's, you can't get much faster than that. <clears throat> so we were all working in Ruby, so this seemed like a logical thing and, uh, to, to do. And it worked a lot faster. Uh, another thing that we, when, we st when I started working on uh, JCov, to, we, one of my ideals was to try to make a test framework agnostic. Because a lot of the frameworks for doing JavaScript 
testing were, were uh, very much tightly coupled with a particular framework. Like uh, there's QUnit, there's well, Jasmine, and they, there's a lot of different plugins that run in a lot of different ways. Some that run on Node, some that use kind of a cucumber type situation where they're running a, a browser. Um, but they're all really tightly coupled to a, to a test framework, um, which wasn't bad. But you know, we wanted to be able to choose which one we we, we used. Um, also, this gave us the ability to do code coverage. Because we were writing the back end um, in Ruby, and we were executing JavaScript using the, the Ruby racer, it, it became like a good fit to be able to do code coverage. We were using, we were running code coverage for our RSpec tests, so it would seem like a, a logical thing to do. Plus, we really didn't have, we had some tests, we really didn't know. Okay, well, we're covering these files, but we don't know what, what, what sort of percentage do we have. Because if you have a percentage, if you can measure it, then you can set a goal, and then you could, you could hopefully get your fellow developers to help you write more tests. Um, and this way, you can also set a threshold and say, well, if, the, if it drops below this particular value, then, then it, the tests fail, even though they're all passing. So then, then you get a failure, then people, somebody checked in some JavaScript code that's not covered, and then ideally your coverage keeps going up. So as I said, it's using the, the Ruby racer, uh, but we're also using this other gem called R. Kelly. It is actually a, uh, written by a tender love, so that's why it's kind of a funny name. Um, but uh, it's, it's, a really neat, it's a really neat gem. It, he basically, you, can, you give, it, give it a, uh, JavaScript file, it'll parse all the nodes and give you a, a parse tree. Uh, and then it also has the ability to take that parse tree and emit it out as um, ECMAScript um, standard. So, uh, so it gives you a basically, um, what is it? It's a source tree, oh, it's, it, it traverses the source tree and then goes through that and emits the things to give you something that's standard ECMAScript, which is great. So what, what basically we did is take that and modify it slightly, basically monkey patch it to emit a um, extra code that will record when a particular line of JavaScript code is, is, is executed within the Ruby racer. And then, then we, we have a big data structure that keeps track of every line that was executed and then at the end, we can look at that and say, oh, okay, these lines were executed, these lines weren't executed, so here's your percentage, and there you go. So, so how does it work? This diagram's kind of funky, but so I made like an ASCII diagram. So the idea is the Ruby racer render executes, uh, executes a JavaScript runtime, but it has the ability to go in and out of Ruby, basically. So you can actually, in Ruby, define functions that, uh, in Ruby, you define functions that will appear in JavaScript that will actually execute Ruby code. So in this case, we, define, you can defi we defined a load function that uh, can be called by JavaScript, but will actually execute a Ruby function. So in this case, load meaning, you're loading your JavaScript file to inside your test to actually execute it. So instead of it being done by some JavaScript, it'll go through from JavaScript ground land into Ruby land and eventually call file.load to get the JavaScript file. It'll dump it and give it to R. Kelly, which parses it. Then we render it back to JavaScript uh, using the Xmas, ECMAScript renderer, our own modified version of it that Enters, uh, adds in the line callbacks, and then that gets passed back. Uh, that's the result of the load function. Uh, and in fact, you, this is very clear, but in Ruby, you tell, you tell uh, the Ruby racer, here is my JavaScript file executed in your context, in, in JavaScript context. So it is essentially basically, you're loading it, but it's being modified it, while it loads. And so that's kind of the meat, the, the um, the, uh, the engine that, that uh, JCov does its coverage. <coughs> so here's some code. Now this is a simple 
uh, JavaScript function that, that calculates the, the mean in a simple way. So you give it an array, it'll iterate uh, over the array, sum them up, and then divide by the array length to give you a mean function. And here is some ja the test. So this is actually Jasmine. Um, if you're familiar with Jasmine, it's the, the syntax is, of course, JavaScript, but it's very similar. It, has, it's, it uses the same kind of um, ideas that RSpec uses with describe blocks that can be, that can be uh, inside one another. Um, and you and it'll basically execute them, and it, it'll set up a context. So you have before filters, not before filters, um, before blocks, so before each, and after each, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so in this case, we have two tasks saying it returns the average for array of numbers, it expects the math mean to equal 4.5, and then the same thing with this. It returns zero for empty arrays. Um, so the load will actually lo show do the load function I showed here, well, not there, here, and, uh, and put in all the line callbacks. But then when this test executes mean, it's executing the code with the line callbacks inside of it. And this is what that looks like, essentially. So when mean.js is loaded, it takes what the original file was and adds all these, these things saying, OK, well, it was in this file. This is the line that's being executed. And uh, Jacob line is actually another function that is defined by um, <coughs> defined in Ruby that to execute the, the Ruby racer. So the data, the data, the object is actually living in Ruby to, to keep track of all, all, the, all these, um, these individual line executions. Uh, it's, not, it's not elegant, but hey, it works. <coughs> and let's see. So to kind of go further on we, uh, the Jacob path, we wanted to, I wanted to make it more um, open and allow you to not have to use Jasmine for your, for your tests, that you can use any sort of test framework. In actuality, you don't even have to have tests because it's just code executing, right? So as long as... Sorry? No, no, no. <laughs> they, I mean, yeah, you have to have tests. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. Uh, so we added configuration. I added configuration. So we have a jcov.yaml file that uh, defines all your different things that you can you can set up uh, for jcov. So as I was talking about earlier, you can set up a threshold. So this is the actual percentage that your your tests the coverage percentage that has to be above for it to pass. Oh, also, there's a threshold much ma must match. And the reason, uh, th basically that means if you set that to true, uh, you must have 75.2% coverage or it will fail, even if it's above 75.2% coverage. The reason behind this is uh, the threshold will never go up. <laughs> even though people are adding tests, the, th the, the coverage might be in the 90s, but the threshold is 75.2. So if you set it so the threshold much must match, if they add tests, it'll fail, and it'll have a nice message saying, like, oh, no, you, uh, coverage is higher than the threshold, so please raise it. Um, so then your threshold keeps going up. It gives the developers incentive to keep, press, uh, keep adding tests. Uh, and of course, there's uh, the test directory where the tests come from, uh, the source directory where the sources are loaded from, uh, the test runner, which actually, this is, this is the kind of the meat of it, and I'll get further into that. That's, that's what uh, jcov actually executes to fire off the tests. Um, and that will depend on which, which test framework you're running. Um, and we, uh, we have example Jasmine ones, and so it's, it's, it's straightforward, but I'll get into that in a bit. And then the error field is the actual field in JavaScript land where you would get the number of errors. And, and that's just a, a JavaScript variable. And that could be, it doesn't have to be just a single variable name, it could be deep. 
And then uh, you can set ignore. Uh, so for instance, in most, in most like Rails applications or any sort of uh, web applications, you're going to have a set of libraries that you didn't write. So you shouldn't have to have coverage on it, right? So there'd be stuff like anything in vendor, like if you have jQuery or something, you'd want to put it in this ignore path to actually specify, don't, don't look at that at all. And these are all reg regular expressions, so you can get creative with it. All right. Okay, so the runner files I was saying earlier, this is where the, the rubber meets the road, so to speak. Um, this, is where, uh, this is where jcov actually knows how to execute uh, your tests. And so jcov actually, it will be executed in jcov's context and it will provide uh, an API for you to call to, to basically do anything you, you especially need to do. So for instance, you get an array of all your tests to execute because the, the jcov will actually figure out which tests you want to execute because you can say a subset or something like that. Uh, the configuration that's loaded from that file I just showed. Um, passed in command line options. And then, of course, load, which I showed before, to execute a particular file. You can even read a file in for, as a string. Some JavaScript test frameworks require that for some reason. And uh, you can then the three prints where you can print to the console, print the console with the carriage return, and then print a single character to the console. Now, the, these are here because um, jcov does not actually render the test output because most JavaScript test frameworks handle that already. But we just have to define functions that they can call to actually, that actually go out to RubyLand and, and print that out to the, the console. Because, I mean, th these don't exist inside the, the V8, the, the V8 um, context. There's no way to get out to the console. Uh, so that's fairly, fairly, you know, very fairly straightforward. Uh, for instance, Jasmine has its own um, console reporter, and you basically just give it, oh, this is the print function you need to call to actually render out stuff. Or, and a single character is because you know a lot of these have the dot 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 sort of thing. Um, Quick question. Yeah. Um, before, so this is a wrapper around like Jasmine or any other JavaScript testing framework. This right. gives you a nice API for that. I'm sorry, this gives you a so what? This gives you like a nice API to interact with these other runners that. Right, exactly. Okay. Okay. So, so you have, you have, oh geez, you have a Jasmine or a QUnit or whatever sort of test framework that's written in pure Java on one, JavaScript on one side, yeah, not Java. And uh, you have uh, Ruby on the other side with, um, uh, with the Ruby racer that, that basically contains the V8 engine. And it, it provides these uh, API functions. So your runner file is the glue. And then you say, OK, well, this particular framework gets set up in this way. And here's the data that you need to know to do it. Because if you look, uh, if you're familiar with Jasmine at all, normally you would run. Normally, the kind of the standard way to run it is to you have a, a test HTML file, and then you you set up your the, the 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 framework that way, and then you you have to load each of your um, uh, source files and test files as. Um, script source equals uh, tags because it's just a web page, and then um, and then it'll go. Th it, it'll run through. It'll load all the tests. It'll all be in memory, and then you, and then f then you have a little job a script block that says execute, and then it'll just go through and then render it out as a HTML page. So you're kind of writing that um, the glue, the translation layer. And I'll show you one for Jasmine. It's it's fairly straightforward. OK, so what about the browser? This is, uh, speaking of the browser, what about it? This is all running headless. The, 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 V8, um, the V8 embedded in the Ruby racer I mean, has no knowledge of browsers, not a browser. So we're obviously, for yellowpages.com, testing, 
testing uh, JavaScript that expects to run on a browser. Well, there are libraries that allow you to mimic a full browser in the just in pure JavaScript. There's one called uh, env.js, which is kind of old and not really maintained anymore, but it does, it does an okay job. And then there's another one called JSDOM, I think, that, um, that's not as fully featured, but I think it's more supported. So, uh, so you could use one of those two to actually mimic a browser to, to, that will run your JavaScript and, and, and have all of the DOM uh, the DOM elements would be simulated, and the way that they react with you know CSS manipulations and how they react with jQuery should all be what you expect. Okay, and now for the live portion of our program. Okay. And um, so let's see. Okay, here's Jcov. It runs some tests. So all this output right here is um, actually Jasmine console output, and. Uh, has help, which shows you um, how to do stuff. Uh, it has a little, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, all the global options, like you can do verbose, you can turn on and off the color, which is some of the configuration you can set. So depending on whether your framework supports it, you can pipe that through. Uh, dash dash report actually runs a, uh, it'll, um, output a coverage report to show you the exact lines that are covered or not. Um, and you can also uh, limit the test to only one. One's the match regular expression. So I have in this directory, I have a test directory that has a mean and a median that tests ls, s, that tests these JavaScript files. Can everybody see that? Yep. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. So, so say I wanted to only execute the mean tests. So I can do jcov, com cove, and then give it the just that file. It'll run that file. And there, there's only one test in there. In fact, I can show you that one test. Ooh. No. There. So I think you can see that. Uh, it returns the average array of numbers. So this is what was in the presentation. So I'll just run that, that one. I can, um, I can even do it with a regular expression and say, I just want to run that test by doing dash dash test mean. So it will match only that test. Since we have a mean and a median test, if I did m, it should run both, right? OK. That makes sense. Um, Is that matching on the file or the, main, or the actual spec? Uh, the file. So this is all for the file. Now, let me show you that runner file I was talking about, because that's kind of the most interesting part of this. And well, first, OK, here is this particular uh, <coughs> configuration, and you can do check, and it'll tell you it'll tell you which test directory you're using, which source directory. So even if you don't define it, it'll it'll <coughs> default to particular values. It'll tell you which configuration file you're using. It first looks in the local directory, then it looks in config slash jcov, which is common for Rails, and uh, and then you can also def tell it which which um, uh, Jcov file, which Jcov YAML file configuration file you're using. Uh, I think I'm running out. I've got about four minutes. And so the runner file. Now let me actually shrink this so you can see it a bit better. So this stuff at the top is because Jasmine kind of expects itself to be in the browser and it tries to mock out set timeout and clear set interval and clear both of those. Uh, so we just tell it, because we're not in a browser at all, we just tell it, OK, these are empty functions. You can mock them out all you want. Uh, exports is because it's, it um, expects kind of a, when it's run in this way, and when it's run and it's not in a browser, it expects to that it's in a common JS uh, framework, which is what 
Node uses for a lot of its things. So it'll say, oh, okay, I'm not running a browser, I must be running a node. So we mock that out too. But um, we run it, we, run, we, we load it, we load its console reporter. Uh, we load, we find the tests. So basically what Jcov does, when you run it without any things, it'll recursively look in the directory you told it where the tests are, get all those file names, and then stuff them into the that variable. It will also, and if you limit that by giving it a single file name, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> or or giving it a, uh, um, <laughs> or or giving it like a regular expression, and it sets a, a, a subset of files. It, it'll be it'll show up there. So all that happens in Ruby. So you you don't have to worry about it in JavaScript. Um, yeah. Uh, asynchronously spelled with an H. What? Ah, you're right. <laughs> ah, okay. Where? Ace. <laughs> C. No, that's wrong. There. Yay. Okay. Uh, and this is basically how you set up Jasmine. You get the in Jasmine environment. You tell it this so it doesn't actually use set timeout. Um, it has... I define a complete callback function that you pass to the console reporter. So when the console reporter is actually done reporting, it'll run this function where we set, we find the results from the runner, get the failed count, and set it in that results variable that we show that we use for the error field. So that's how you get the, the number of tests that failed. It's a little janky, but the reason why we have to do this is because right now you can't actually execute a function in the error field. It's a field, not a function. So, so we have to do this sort of a janky thing. Um, we give it the print function from uh, Jcov, and we also find the color option that we set, that gets set um, from the command line. So if you say no color, it'll come up here as false. And then, uh, then, and then the console reporter won't print out the color codes. Um, this is part of Jasmine saying you add that particular reporter and then you execute it. So the only places that we're, we're getting the tests, that's kind of the most important here. Uh, we're, when we define the reporter, that's when we give it the print function and we give it the um, uh, any options like color or whatever, and then, then this we have the results where it find, finds it. Um, and that's you know basically it. So this is it's all tied together here. It knows how to print itself. When it's done, we know where to find the if it passed or failed, and, um, and that, that's where we go from there. Okay, I'm like almost done, out of time, but. I'll just show the final thing, which is uh, the report. So this will actually give you the percentage of coverage. Oh, that's not interesting at all. OK. And then um, uh, let me, OK, I'm going to delete the second test. And then we'll see that. When we run Jacob report, we'll actually get a lower percentage. And we don't, we're not testing whether it fails threshold or not, but I won't even show that. Okay. So if it fails threshold, this will return a non-zero return value so that you could use it in something like a continuous integration server, and it will say, oh, this had a non-zero return value, so we failed. So if coverage is, if any test breaks, if we say something like, uh, who say something like it should equal 4.66, and then we run, it will actually fail. Expected 4.5 to equal 4.6. And you want failure, test failures, frowny face, and then um, there we go. But then if we, it passes, it'll actually show you the coverage, and it'll give you a fancy um, coverage report. There we are. Mean, no, that's very small. Mean JS is 
and then it'll show you which line was actually not covered. And, uh, and there you go. Cool. Thanks. So that was about 30 minutes. Does anybody have any quick questions? Yeah. So for the threshold, is that running on the 92% that you have in your report, or is that going to fail on file thresholds? Uh, it's the, uh, final, the final percentage. It's a, a full percentage, so it's of all files. So it's this, this one, 92.3%, the total, co uh, total coverage, essentially. So this will add up all the lines and all the covered lines and then tell you what your percentage that way. Cool. Cool. Anybody else? All right. Oh. <laughs> Wait. Oh, no. Hold on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's a gem. You can just install it. Gem install Jacob. That's kind of the nice part about it. All right. Thank you. Thanks.